Apologize if you can't hear by uh, the governor's orders. We are all required to wear a mask, even with social distancing and the front seat mask. It is what it is. So, roll call Donald Poole, myself, Pam Alley, Jake Thompson, and Bill Crossman is attending remotely. Andy Dollar, town manager, and Elizabeth Bunker, deputy town clerk, is taking minutes. Uh, approve agenda. Do we have any additions, attractions? I move we approve the agenda as presented. Second. Seconded by Donald Poole. All those in favor. And Phil, Phil has raised his hand. Yeah. Minutes, approve the minutes from the November 10th, 2020 meeting. So just a couple of, um, for the record, just who voted what on the executive session. Um, from the uh, November 10th meeting. Well, I know that I made the motion to come in and come out. Yeah. And I cannot remember who seconded that. I believe Phil might have seconded both of them. Uh, I move we approve the minutes from the November 10th meeting. Second. Seconded by Donald Poole. All those in favor. And now the November 24th slash 27th meeting. All just the same, so I don't have to be here. I would make some fun summer meeting. Right. Ready. I move that we approve both sets of minutes. Second. Second is by Donald Poole. All those in favor? Okay. Approved and signed treasurer's warrant number 23. So moved. Second. Seconded by Donald Poole again. All those in favor? Have you got uh, No. But well, I've signed you. There are two warrants to sign. Uh, communications, main DMR, renewal of limited purpose aquaculture licenses for 2021. I put the memo on the screen here. There are a handful of um, renewals. Uh, so those numbers there correspond to what you can find on the state's website. Um, they have a GIS map on there basically so you can get the information off of each of those sites. Um, but again, these are just the renewals. Oh, so this is just for a one-year renewal, not like a 20-year right? Yeah, I think all the LPAs are just a limited purpose, so they're just a shorter shorter time period. But whereas you can get a 10-year lease potentially on other types of projects. Yeah, well, I just got an email from that. I'm still looking at one 20 year. I wasn't sure about if it's a one-year, I'd be all right with it. But no. so it doesn't require an action, just letting, you know, letting the community know. Okay. Speakers from the floor. It just gave in that. Yeah, I. I hi, um, hi. Um, I just wanted to say I'm obviously not on the agenda tonight for planning and community development, but that Matt and I will be um, uh, bringing some stuff to share at the next meeting, as well as some committee updates for you. Okay, great. And the, the sheriff is on as well to help uh, just to go over the any changes in the contract or questions you might have in that. I think I saw him on there earlier. 
I am here. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Okay, committee and department reports and appointments. Appointment to the budget committee. Uh, it's Eric Davis. I think we tried to do that last time, and yeah. uh, that was the meeting that we didn't have audio. So. Mm -hmm. I move we appoint Eric Davis to the budget committee. He's not already on it. Who was off last year or something? Yeah, he didn't renew. Just okay, seconded by Pam Alley. All those in favor? Road Commissioner's report. Did they cover up the gallon Yeah. Yeah. You did. We do got to just put a couple of vents, uh, holes for venting up at towards the top there, but otherwise. You don't think there's any holes in that wood anywhere that the land is getting out there? Uh, I took that sheeting that wrap right right up underneath the eaves there. Oh, I did. I bought it just with the There's a little bit on the bottom there, but you know, if we get, if we get snow, it'll kind of be a little too, probably, it could be a little too tight, so we'll work on finalizing that, but it is at least wrapped for this winter. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Engineer report. Uh, so with uh, Wooden and Curran, they've got a few things going. Uh, I did include um, from mid, almost a month ago now what they had submitted to us for November. Um, we're in November. So the since then, I'll just emphasize the, the garage uh, public works facility update. Um, I did uh, yesterday. We got some number or more fine-tuned numbers with work products or plans uh, from the Sheridan company. So um, I did give you a copy of that, hard copy of that, um, and I can send an email out as well if you want to look at it virtually or digitally. Um, so the what they after the site visit, I uh, went back, talked to the subs, got a better idea of all all that needed to be done. Um, when they when we signed a contract, if you will, with them earlier, which were estimated at 850,000 to do the work on it. Um, after the site visit, the numbers came back and they're at 789 right now. Um, we're just over 789, um, so it's about a 60,000 dollar difference from what they estimated that it might be after seeing it. So, uh, with that, there is a list of uh, the things that are going to be done in that packet. Uh, so review that. We can take it up at the next meeting. Uh, in between now and then, um, if the board is um, still feeling confident to move forward, they'd like kind of a green light to secure housing. Um, they do have a few places out here that they're talking with uh, property owners on, and they're getting pressure to make a commitment sooner rather than later. Um, so we know how quick those things can disappear. So that's something you can green light. Um, I'll let them know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys shouldn't require a formal motion. Just go ahead, you know, get out of here. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I think with that, they're expecting to start, um, depending on when a final number, um, if you want to review that and meet next, um, they think they could, within three to four weeks of that, uh, that go ahead, they'd be able to start working. Um, so they're looking at mid-January mid to be able to be out here. Yeah. And they think after seeing it, instead of four months, they think it might only take three months. But all weather dependent and whatnot. So, great. Great. get the show on the road. Yeah. Didn't think it was ever going to happen. Okay, old business. Knox County Sheriff 2021 contract. Uh, so, they, uh, Knox County has, uh, has sent this back after their lawyers. We know they were, we were waiting for them to go back through it and review it again. Um, there is uh, a few changes or strike throughs in here. Um, I did have an opportunity to talk with the sheriff about it uh, last week, late last week, and um, just expect some of the things that jumped out at me, and I highlighted those um, in my report to you. Um, I think the, the ones that I thought that jumped out were the the communities, were, you know, desire to see seven nights a week of coverage out here. Um, currently, there is just this past week uh, a resident deputy that, if you will, that started. Um, you know, so there's four, essentially four days um, where someone's on duty um, in the evening, and so that leaves another three nights. So the contract does call for the 40 hours, and it does specify the aspiration to see 80 hours, um, but it would be another contract essentially once someone's found. Um, so we have another one or a modified one at that point, is how it's currently written. Uh, the housing allowance that's in there, um, it's worded as an allowance in. The numbers that are in there would be an increase from 13,500 to 17,000 a year um, as it's presented. Um, 
and it has the town. And Jimmy might have to help me on this one. We I brought up the the seventy five dollar a day stipend that's in there. We talked about that last winter about a year ago. Um, so when the deputy spends the night, um, it would be seventy five dollars for that shift. Um, and so the contract as it was presented back to us called for us to pay hundred percent of that. Um, I think you know, between the sheriff and I, I think we were on a different page after we talked. Um, and that basically, I thought we'd be splitting that and it clarified that the $75 a day was only for um, a deputy who spends the night, not for the resident deputy, because that's part of the housing allowance that we're getting anyway. So um, it was an incentive to try and get deputies to come and fill in spaces or fill in you know, the, the schedule there. Um, on a, I thought on a positive note, the county was is willing to take on the replacement of the vehicle in that contract. Um, there's some things in there that I'm hoping get to the points of accountability and what I think the board and the community were looking at for communicating backward, you know, both ways. Um, and um, to continue for 50 50 cost share for the first 40 hours in, in this contract would still be 50 50. When a second deputy comes on, that would be another discussion, but likely, you know, we'd be paying, um, I believe, 100% of that one. Um, that's what we had talked about. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think you all know, but the sheriff's office did buy a boat that is for the thoroughfare or will go a little bit further, but primarily for the thoroughfare. Um, so those are the ones that I, I think I pulled out and noted that were substantial. There were a couple of minor edits since he and I talked, um, like the housing, it talked about the county would you know, invoice us for housing costs. Um, so we're either we're usually the ones paying or the deputy is the one that takes it on and we just you know pay it to them or the, or the landlord. So we cut that part out. Um, other than that, um, I don't think there were any other changes. Um, Sheriff, you guys, the commissioners had a meeting today, I believe. I was on that for a little bit. Um, I don't know if you had anything more you wanted to add or if the board had questions for for you or us. Um, if I'll just, I'll just kind of add my piece into it and then uh, absolutely I'll take on any, any questions. Um, my desire to get at least to get a contract in place is really the desire. We've been kind of running without one well, for the good part of the year, you know, in all aspects. We had it extended for six months and three months and back and forth. But I wanted to get a contract in place that at least identified having the one deputy out there. Um, as you all know, it's been a challenge trying to get a resident deputy out there. I think you will be happy with Chad Abbott. He's the, the new deputy, the new resident deputy on Vinyl Haven. He's coming. He's got 25 years law enforcement experience. Um, he was a police sergeant just prior to coming here. And prior to that, he was a game warden for many years. So, you know, obviously capable of working alone, um, many years of experience. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that uh, he's going to serve the county well, uh, the, the town of Vinyl Haven well. Um, that uh, you know, he's going to be some of that part of that community policing that uh, the island um, is desiring, which I absolutely agree that um, I think he's got the capability of doing that, being uh, more integrated into the into the community, and being that resource for law enforcement. Um, I do wish to, I just like I said, I want to get this contract in place to get a 40-hour person out there just to, to get something out there solidified. I do still have hopes and plans to look at that 80 hours of having two deputies out there. I've approached it in a couple different ways of, as you all know, some of the, the, the complaints of the deputy that's there in the past has been when you're out there, you're always on, you really don't get any downtime. So a, a approach that I'm taking is two deputies, um, but it's on there, they alternate weeks, but when they're out there, they're basically on, well, it would be about 11 hours of the day, they'd be getting, but you'd be getting 80 hours of service every week, um, you know, daytime and nighttime uh, scheduling. So you would have a law enforcement officer on duty pretty much seven days a week, um, varying the times of day and night coverage. Um, I'm still looking to do that. I want to do that. And I think that's probably the best service to the island. Um, but I just, like I said, I wanna get this one in place for now. And then when we get to that next step of, at this point, honestly, it would be after the first of the year of recruiting somebody to be that other deputy. Obviously it, 
the two deputies, you know, it would be a partnership really in how we make that work that best benefits the town um, is what we'd be looking for. But that would be in communication with you as the select board as to moving forward with that and how we can, how we can make that all, all happen. Um, you know, for the, the most feasible way to do it as, as well as making sure that you get the coverage that you want. Um, we did take on a few things, you know, it was one contract, one island contract, we provide the car, Vinyl Haven for a number of years, you provided the car, I thought it only made sense that, you know, it's, you know, if it's good for one island, it's good for the other that we should take on that, um, that burden in, in itself, um, working out some of the, the, the routine maintenance of things, um, if you could take care of that, and also sharing the cost of and you know, recognizing the increased costs of flying, which obviously we do only on a really as needed emergency basis, but sharing the cost of the transportation to and from the island, especially regarding when arrests are made or, or the necessity of getting deputies out there. So um, it just, I thought it just made sense. It may seem to be fair, more fair, I feel, um, between the county and the town and, and working together. So, um, I'll take on any questions, but I will say I've talked with Andy quite a bit and um, I really appreciate the conversations we've had, the discussions we've had, um, really trying to provide the best service that we can. And I, I, it's been a rough year, absolutely. I, I agree with that. I, um, and hopefully, I think like everybody, 2021 is gonna be a better year all the way around. So um, I think we're all hoping for that, but um, I will field any any questions anybody has? Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Not really. No, I mean, this time. I, I do like the fact that um, perhaps they will be enforcing our local ordinances. That's a plus. Yes. As far as like the fireworks and the complaints we have about that type of thing. Well, I'm happy to see that. Phil's got his hand up. Eric? Yeah, why does, why does the contract say that they may enforce local ordinances? Why would that not be incumbent upon them? Uh, it's, I guess I would say it's more lawyer speak that we may because we don't do that in many of the other, or uh, the two islands are the only two that we enforce local ordinances. Um, really? Yeah, it's something, it's just for a law enforcement officer to en enforce all the ordinances, because as you know, every town has different ordinances to be able to keep up on that and do that. That's just something that unless it's a contract, we don't do that in the other towns. It's just North Haven and Vinyl Haven are the only two that we enforce local ordinances. And it's only because it just makes sense. You know, in my mind, it just makes sense for us to also do that on, it is the island deputy he's assigned to that town that um, he can be that resource to enforce the ordinances, but we don't do it on any of the mainland towns. And so does that mean that we can count on you doing it on Vinyl Haven and North Haven, or is it subject to the deputy's discretion? No, we can, it's part, it's in here, I'd look at it, it's part of the contract that we will enforce the local ordinances of the town as well. Well, the, the, the contract doesn't say you will, it says you may. Unless I misread something. No, you're right. It says services provided may include patrolling the town. And I, I, Annie and I talked about this a little bit. I think it's more of it, you know, just like call responding to it may. I mean, if you read all the language, we may respond to the citizens calls for assistance. Well, obviously we will. We may enforce statutes. Obviously we will. So I'm not sure those are the legal language of that. I think the ordinance part is in there um, that we, you know, I take it as we will, and I'm, I'm, can ensure you, I'm telling you now that we will enforce the local ordinances of Vital Haven. Okay, good enough for me. Um, I also want to say, as I've communicated to the sheriff over the last couple of weeks, that uh, Josh Lemoy, the deputy in North Haven, has really set the bar high for community involvement and for uh, law enforcement. Really, really an impressive young fellow, and I hope that he will serve as a, an example for 
the fellow who's coming to Violent Haven. That would be really, that would be terrific. Uh, Phil, and just so you know, I have I talked to Josh today. He happened to bring somebody over today, um, and I expressed your thoughts that you that you said to me uh, to him. So he knows that. But I do know that he is going to be working with Chad in the next couple of weeks, just for the familiarization. And and uh, I agree. Hopefully, some of that rubs off. I don't think too much needs to rub off. I think you'll be happy with Chad. I really do. Good. I'm very encouraged. Thank you. Does anybody else have any thoughts on the, the housing? Well, it's, it's an allowance, so well, it's not guaranteed to be paid. That's just what I'm happy. That's the cap. We're just increasing the cap. Um, if that's how, some, I don't know if it's really worded that way, um, we shall provide a housing allowance. I mean, we'll provide taller housing allowance. It's not. So we're going to be paying $1,000 a month, and if they find something for 750, they talk to the other 250. Um, a thousand bucks a month plus the up to five, the five thousand for the utilities. So the way it's worded, the way I see it, is the town shall provide housing allowance that includes that full amount. There, housing payments will be capped at twelve hundred a month or twelve thousand for the year, rather. Um, and the heating and electricity costs will be capped at the five thousand per year. So they're two separate buckets, but the most we could pay and max out of both the seventeen. Which is an increase of what? So they provide us with their bills and then we pay up to that amount, right? Presumably, that's, um, that's I what we're like. Just need to be clear. If the rent is less, I'm sorry to interrupt. If it's less than that, then it's, it's whatever the monthly payment. If you find somebody, you know, you sign, find something for 500 bucks a month for a rent, that'd be great. And that's what you pay for rent. I think capped is at most, is the way I read it. The way I understand yeah, it. I don't, well, that's what I would I don't have a problem with it. It's, it's, yeah, and it's also, so I do know in one former landlord tenant agreement that we had like this, the landlord asked, what, what's the maximum yearly allowance? And he, that's the rest. Right. He, 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 you know, he, yeah, I mean, he did exactly what he should do, but so I have a feeling if that's what the cap is. We're going to be paying off the close to it. Well, yeah, you're not going to get much more than that. Well, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. A thousand dollars a month is a quite a quite a rent. You are swimming with. I was going to say, that's what I was saying last time I read that here. Oh, a couple of years ago. Wow. Okay. Okay. I guess it is what it is. Sheriff, are there any other, um, it looked like the commissioners were generally okay with things? Yes, they were. They were, um, that one commissioner just, because we, because it was expressed that I was having the meeting tonight or was attending the meeting tonight with you. Um, and they they approved it based on if there was any major substance change that it would have to go back to the commissioners. If there isn't anything major as far as changes, then we can go forward with how it's presented. Uh, there was one commissioner that just had a concern that they were approving a, a contract that may change tonight, but um, we got past that. They uh, unanimous, unanimously approved it as presented. And from here, if, if you're, if you're okay with the language and I'm not trying to rush anything, obviously you'll get a cleaner version and then we'll do the, get the original signatures and all that stuff going forward. I, I move we approve this contract for North Carolina Sheriff's Office. Second. Seconded by Pam Alley. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor. And let the record show Phil did raise his right hand. Yay. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you very much for your time. Yes, yeah, thank you. It, I do plan on uh, getting out there as soon as we get through this thing. I've expressed to uh, Andy, I had my knee replaced in October, so I haven't been really going too far. Um, but I do plan on making some more of an appearance out there. Um, I tried to do it more this summer and recognizing that I think it needs to happen. And again, I know this has been a trouble year for many, many reasons and, and a, a bunch of different things going on. And hopefully that 2021 is treats us all better and, um, 
you know, I, I hope that the relationship between the sheriff's office and the, the town of Vinyl Haven, uh, we regain some of that trust. I know we lost some. I, I absolutely admit that. I know we lost some trust. And my efforts are to this year with the right person, with the right people, that we regain the trust um, that we have with the sheriff, that you have with the sheriff's office. And uh, we go forward from here. So thank you. And I, I appreciate working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and speed your recovery. Thank you. Okay, going to new business, foreclosed property. Um, so we do have a, a piece of property that for, we for, you know, automatic foreclosure. That letter that went out last winter, um, I think it was early February. Um, it wasn't paid, so that was foreclosed. There were a couple others. Um, since then, they had paid. Um, this is the only one remaining. Um, I did send another letter in September, um, didn't get a response and it wasn't returned, just undeliverable letter. Um, it was returned another It wasn't. Okay. Um, so it was, you can see, I mean, payments were made right up until the 2018 tax year. Um, you know, Darlene and I tried, you know, she does a lot of research whenever properties go on the lien list or a foreclosure list. Uh, Look with the county, our county here. Um, if you can't find information here, she does try to, based on the address we have, try to look elsewhere in those places where they live. Um, this could be potentially a case where we may not be assessing to the right owner, and that this could be a, a pair of people that may have passed. Um, this happened a few years ago on another property we had, and so we just have to reassess it to the right owner or the one because if the state closes and it passes through a probate kind of period. I'm not saying that this is what happened here, but we're just um, not 100% confident that it's not. Um, and so it's a matter of what do you want to do with it? Um, do you want us to keep keep down that road of trying to see if that if that is the case, um, or do you want to see that? Where does the, where does the legal burden fall? I mean, I mean, if they if it's on their will or whatever that they keep the look into it and we foreclose and send letters to the last known address, shouldn't it shouldn't the burden fall on them to follow up and do it? I mean, it's not like we can have it. It should in it in all I, mean, I just don't know where our legal burden lies. It shouldn't it generally does in the case where it goes, you know, a property might go through like a probate process, if you will. Again, like only speaking from the experience we had with previously with another property like this. And the lawyer in that case just I got the file, it didn't file it, didn't realize it didn't get filed. And then once we re once we found out that there was a different owner of record, we had to then go back and reassess those three years as like a one one tax year payment kind of thing. Um, and then you know, it was still owed to us. We just kind of reset that, that foreclosure period clock. Um, so I mean, I, for me, I'd recommend that we just look at that a little bit further to see before we make any decisions on releasing it or selling it or however we want to treat that. I would, yeah, I agree with you, but we should try to do that, you know, let's not prolong it any longer than necessary, especially, you know, if there is somebody else that's interested in the property, regardless of what our decision is there, at least be able to give them an answer somewhat timely. So, you know, just figure it out, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they had long enough for you to think of me. Yeah. Yeah. Like if they if they right. were deceased and they had children, you would think that they would know somebody, would not, somebody might know that they now own a piece of property somewhere. Right. And if they mm -hmm. don't know, maybe they just don't care if they own a piece of property somewhere. Well, Good for that yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not like we foreclose after one year. It's got a number. Okay, fire alarm upgrades. Uh, so this was uh, triggered by uh, the submissions we have at the library. Um, and looking at the system, I mean, we know there are um, these radio communicator or transmitted systems. We don't currently have those. Ours go through the fax lines or the phone lines. Um, we have them in three different buildings. Um, so they, in working on the one of the library, um, acknowledge this has been an issue on and off for the last few years. It's a phone company problem, no, it's a security company problem. And so we had them looking at it and just asked them, well, what, what's the cost to upgrade? Because they are, you know, a little older. Uh, but what's the cost to upgrade? Um, to these radio systems. And so for all three buildings, um, the town office, the fire department, and the library, if we wanted to upgrade or change out those fire alarm systems to be radio um, communicators, 
would be uh, 3,600 bucks, just over $3,600 uh, to do that for all three buildings. What account would this come from? Just going those yeah, just, uh, We'd be able to take it from the operating um, expenses for each of those buildings at 1,200 a piece. It's something I think that we can, we can do with each of those budgets. Don't see it. What was the monthly rate before? It's going to be thirty-four dollars per month for a location. What is it? Do the phone line. No, uh, I think the phone lines are like thirty-three bucks, or just about the same price per month for the phone line. So if we can eliminate a phone line, um, it's just like you know, passing, you just pass it from one to the other. There's no change in cost in that sense. Well, it's more reliable. I'd say that's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mark recommends we do consider this because, again, it is a more upgraded, updated, and reliable mm -hmm. system to do this. I, I agree. Uh, I, you say Mark recommends yes. this. All right. Okay. I move approval of this, of this proposal. Second. Seconded by Pam Allen. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Bill is raised the right hand. Server hardware upgrade. All right, so the server, the the migration from the old to the new is uh, wrapping up, um, and the tech company is pointing out that they're um, they would highly recommend that we look to install some firewall and protection on the server. It's one that the old one never had. Um, so. Um, these were honestly a little surprised to see how low they were, um, these costs to get the hardware um, and have this done. Uh, so now we don't think this is really an option for us, it was just a matter of needing to know what the cost was so we could see if we could do it in this year's budget. And at that, at that cost, I feel confident we can. So is it the 14, 13, and the 12, maybe of the two? I understand it's, yeah, to be both of those together. Points on our own, your upgrade, everything. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think we, we can figure we can get our answers for more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's happening with the bigger cities, but also smaller towns are also getting data compromised. And um, the cost for the ransom is, you know, it, it's unfathomable for some of these places. Oh, yeah. I move we approve the contract for WG Tech or the agreement with WG Tech. Seconded by Pam Alley. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Assistance to firefighters grant request. Uh, there's, a, there's a possibility that um, a regional uh, grant um, is submitted to some of the Knox County for some of the Knox County Fire Departments. Uh, Mark's put some other numbers together. You might recall the last couple of years we talked about upgrading our radios to a digital form. Um, something that the county was anticipating having to do on the, you know, within the next five years, and slowly we've been upgrading some of the pagers, and, and we've got a couple of the radios already. Um, but this is an opportunity to buy a, a larger quantity and to pay potentially uh, 90 or maybe 95 percent of the cost to do that. Um, so it's kind of a no-brainer, but they do need a letter of support from the board um, or on behalf of the town um, saying that we're we're willing to go in on this purchase if awarded. Um, so we'd be able to replace all of them. Um, Mark shows there. Each one's about 500 bucks. Um, you can see there the cost for the for both departments, fire and EMS combined, would be the uh, about 2200 just over 2200 or $3,200 rather, um, as opposed to $29,000. Um, so it's really a no-brainer. It's just a matter of your kind of blessing to apply for the grant and be commit to, commit to paying that, that if we get awarded. So uh, we, we wouldn't be paying if we didn't get awarded, or would we then be facing paying the full $29,000? No, so yeah, no, we're just putting in for the grant. So if awarded, we can then purchase. Okay. I mean, at some point over the next five years, we're right. preparing to buy them. So um, instead of buying a couple of year, three or four a year, we could potentially get a wall for the cost of four or five. Yeah, that's, um, so it's just a matter of a formality for your approval to do it. Yep. I move that we authorize um, the fire department and the ambulance service to enter the grant opportunity and also commit the 
$2,079 for the fire department and $1,155 for EMS to be taken out of each department's reserve. Second. Seconded by Donald Poole. Any discussion? All those in favor. And thank you, Mark, for finding us. Yes. Oh, okay, so that's still on the yes, I hope. Yeah, yes. Okay, good. Okay, ambulance bill and settlement request. I'm sharing this with you. I don't have anywhere written or in policy that says I can speak on behalf. I mean, where it comes from a lawyer's office. Uh, what it is is there is a, a a case that's ongoing. We're not a named party. We sent an ambulance bill to someone who has utilized the service. Part of the settlement is to finalize costs and figure out, you know, who's paying for what. And um, it, it's being requested that we consider lowering the amount of the 885 that was billed to the 590, acknowledging uh, and reflecting the prorated legal fees. Um, I did, you know, ask the bill, you see where it was addressed to us, but it's called the billing company. And so I did ask, clarify. Sometimes it's kind of similar to what we get from insurance companies. Sometimes they ask us to negotiate a price or uh, agree to adjust the, the price due. Um, we usually say no to those. Um, this one, I, where it's coming from, I assume that we just need to have you guys approve this. Um, so just bring it to you. Um, if in the future we wanted to revisit our billing policy, collection policy, the you know, give authorization one way or the other. We do get denials a lot. We do get requests for from income companies to adjust the rate. Um, but for this, in this case, if you wanted to provide an answer one way or the other, I can let them know. So it's either to lower, allow, or agree on a lower amount, or or to keep it at the 885. I would say we keep it at the 885. What did the uh, PC people say that they do? In, in a case like this, they would recommend, I mean, we don't run our service at a profit. Um, if anything, our rates are probably one of the lowest in the, in the area. Um, you know, being a town service, we aren't trying to run it at profit. But that being said, we also don't run, you know, the ability to run with a 30% law and keep things going um, the, way it, the way it does. So um, she definitely said to just deny this request um, and try and get the full amount. Oh. Sounds good to me. Yeah. I understand why you pay a lawyer to get not even three hundred or about three hundred dollars knocked off your bill. Like that. This is this is just one part of money. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll see you the case. Uh, do you actually need a motion to deny this request? I would. I don't have anywhere else in the file. Okay. I I move we deny the request. Second. Seconded by Donald Poole. Any discussion? All those in favor. Okay, report from town manager. Uh, most of the stuff I provided you we've already covered. I have. Um, I did add, um, so I've had two requests in the last week. Um, it's come up before. Um, seems to be a shortage of place to take cars after they've been in an accident um, or, or what have you. Um, they can't, we don't accept them at the dump unless it's a title because the company that we then send them to requires a title. Mm -hmm. in order to jump them. Um, in that meantime, cars might uh, continue to lie on someone else's property and there seems to be no means for the property owner to see it moved um, unless they call a mainland tow company for them to impound it. Um, the, the means that were available you know, before the summer are, I guess aren't available out here anymore. Um, I don't know if you feel that this is something, a role that the town should play in. You know, should we have a place we can impound cars basically and um, or not so just kind of bringing that there if you wanted me to look into that or not sounds like we'll be doing an awful lot of leg work why don't they just tell them to whoever's house it is if they don't have room for them or... yeah and so they can square it up to get taken to the mainland if that's the case i mean or if until a title is procured and then they could then they can be disposed of at the dump and we yeah. can coordinate getting it off but and in the meantime, why is it our problem if someone has a junk car? Yeah. Right. I mean, it shouldn't be the town's problem, it should be the, the owner of the vehicle. Uh, because I could see it cost them a thousand miles. Yeah. yeah. You know, and just a lot of head to head and one on staff. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, I mean, unless we charge them 
probably right all the day to keep it there. Hopefully. Well, I mean, I would recommend there would be a fee if we were to do it. I mean, my understanding of it, and I haven't looked too far into it, would be we'd have to provide a, a secure area for these mm -hmm. other people's properties. So, I mean, the dump is the closest we have with fencing and with cameras. Um, there's not a lot of space up there. Um, other than that, we'd have to kind of create a place to do this um, storm. Then we would then seek the ownership, but they would pay a fee for the to have it there. Um, either paid by the people dropping it off, or you hope you get it back if someone claims the vehicle. Right. That would say, let's, let's stay away, away from that up in the facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's, let's stay away from it for the time being. Okay. Uh, the, the attorneys did file the, our response or a response on behalf of the town in the Hurricane Island Foundation's tax exemption case for the Superior Court. Uh, my understanding is it is just waiting for the judge now at this point to decide if uh, further action or decisions to be made on that. Um, this is over a year now um, on that one. And workforce housing. Um, so just looking at um, some of the challenges and some of the reasons why costs for capital projects are so high out here. Um, and, and there's so much of the public works facility now, the, the bridge project will also be taking place late winter and into the spring. I'm still finalizing you know, schedule on that. Um, but it's presenting to be a significant challenge to find places, um, which makes projects last longer or finds companies uninterested um, so it's just one more thing that they've got to try and coordinate and deal with on being on the island. Um, and just looking at the public works garage alone, and that estimated timeline of 16 weeks when they submitted the first set of paperwork, um, I kind of ran with those numbers and I looked at what if they came back and forth on the ferry boat every day, what if they flew back and forth every day, what if they rented a house, what if they stayed um, like at a hotel and paid a nightly rate. Um, you know, and looked at that in the difference between renting a few places to put the crews in at a monthly rental cost versus the cost of sending them back and forth every day on the ferry boat, for example, which we know is not a viable solution if projects are going to be done on a known, known time frame. Um, it's a much shorter work day. Um, you know, so just in, in the cost to have a, a worker sitting on a ferry boat, potentially three hours a day, um, I didn't factor in what that value was, or what that extra cost was, or cost savings might be if your project was going to be 16 weeks, assuming eight to 10 hour work days, and now you're only working six hour work days. But it was just looking at the cost to transport people and pay the employees to be there. And um, it was about a, at least a $60,000 savings by renting a house. Um, now, because those are sometimes hard to come by, and we have a lot of capital projects coming up in the future. Um, the Main Street project won't be a 16-week project. Um, we've got a lot of pacing we've got to do throughout the next few years, work improvements. Um, all that being said, it just you know kind of begs the question, where do we do we want to play a role in trying to facilitate or coordinate housing for these short-term capital projects to try and guarantee that it's not one more thing to worry about? We can secure it, we have it available, we can keep the cost of these projects lower. I mean, you can potentially save 60 grand and get it done in the time frame we thought it was going to be, I assume that's worth it to us in this community to try and keep those project costs low. It's just what's the upfront list to try and create this opportunity for housing. Um, don't have the answer, but um, do you think it's something that we should, you guys should be thinking of and have us or someone directed to try and find the solution? I think it's worth, yeah, I think it's worth exploring. I suggest that we um, buy a place to rent out we either, yeah, we could either buy a place, build a place, you know, work with a, a property owner out here who has a place big enough that could potentially be converted into some sort of communal type housing, dorm type housing. Um, you know, you look at, I think some, some places have been created with the project costs, has to, there's housing costs associated with most of your projects. And, you know, could that cost of the housing be they bring something with them, a, a, a small, tiny house or, something with them, a modular home, to be in during the time frame after the project's done that stays on the island potentially and could be sold or used in other ways, uh, either for affordable housing. I think there's some interesting things we can consider doing. Um, if we've got a five to seven year window with significant capital projects, we don't want housing 
to own houses. The town of Lionhaven, as a government, doesn't want to own the houses. Potentially, five to seven years down the road, a solution could be to make them available for purchase for year-round year-round residents or something like that. I mean, that's far down the road, but I think there's some creative solutions that we could come up with that would solve a few different issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's worth exploring, but my gut tells me to be wary of purchasing property. Well, like when I read it, I was thinking that you had some place that was some summer residence that was gonna be here from you know, for like four months and they'd be willing to let us have the house for the other eight months, you know, every year, like we could sign like some kind of a contract to get like a lower rate and then that could be the place that they stay. You know, when the winter is what where I read it with the well, you know. Well the issue with that though and obviously is if we're gonna have cruise out here in the spring and summer months, you're not gonna be able to have a half the housing. So if we do as a town have a property that we can put people up in year round, that would be obviously better. But I mean that is a that is a solution too, as you said, with probably multiple ways we can go about it. But yeah, it seems we might need to, as a town, think about that more seriously because not only with all the projects coming up, but if we're going to try to provide affordable housing as a town, that might be one of the routes we have to go to. Those got to end up. Bill? Yeah, I hope we will. Let's move forward with looking at alternatives because I think it definitely makes sense given the repetitive occasions where we find ourselves looking for housing uh, to try and find a property that would serve that purpose for the town in perpetuity, not just year by year or happenstance by happenstance. I think we should move forward with looking at that very carefully. Great. Um, do you have the um, budget process with the departments kicking off um, just as they're starting to go through the goals worksheets um, as, as we normally do? Um, and then in January, we'll, we'll start uh, reviewing costs and um, getting some of their figures together. Um, but with that, I did want to bring up the strategic plan again. Um, and I don't know if, if you all had a chance to look at that again, um, if there's any substantial um, changes or updates. Um, you know, I've had a couple um, department heads kind of the feedback they were saying, you know, well, shouldn't the board be telling us what, what, what the goals are for us to do? And so this document is kind of, I'm trying to get it to a point where this document, all their goals and most of their goals and you is tied back to this. We can see exactly what we're trying to accomplish. We are working towards these goals here. So the community sees that, the department sees that. We just work towards the same things. Um, so with that, I just wanted an opportunity for you guys to quickly revisit that again, the work you did last winter on creating this. Um, as long as you know things are still on track with those generally, um, this isn't a full blown workshop to modify it, but just there's things that you're thinking of that are big items or big programs, things that have changed because of COVID and what we've seen this year, or you know things that you want to see committees continue um, doing that aren't on here. Just would be helpful to know. I think we, I feel like we left a pretty good spot. I agree. I thought we, I mean. I don't, I don't see any major overhauls of what we have up there. Right? Yeah, I don't think anything changed. The only thing that might have changed would be the timeline. Right. Yeah. But I mean, if we went through it again, I don't think we'd be adding or subtracting too much. No, it would be minimal. Yeah, any changes in wording. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we've got that in a pretty good spot. I would say that's not be a dead horse. Yes, my, <laughs> my hope is that this year we, we're beginning to try and create this something Matt's work helping us work on is, you know, kind of creating these, these KPIs or these measurables. That you tie back to these these things that you've identified one to see done. So then we can show you how, how it's progressing. We can show the community how we're working towards it. If it's a cost associated with you, can share that. Um, but trying to tie this all back together to this one kind of very condensed vision of what you kind of created and want to see completed. Um, and try and stay focused on those things. Because you know, again, I kept seeing us just kind of scatter and pull one way and keep going the other way. So this hopefully will kind of give us a, the traction continue to move forward on these things um, and, and keep tying it back to it. Board members. I just wanted to bring up, I don't know if we covered this 
this a letter from the island that on the fourth floor of the property that was that's what it looked like. I have, a, I have a, a question about the when is the ferry going to come back on the big ferry? Uh, I, I heard from someone at the co-op and they said that with the with the uh, Curtis being on, their trucking company has to go and rent a truck that's shorter to get on this boat and it is causing some logistical nightmares and wondering why our ferry boat is getting taken to Islesboro who has 300 people in the winter to a place that has 1,500. I mean, they, caught, they have a trip every hour. I just don't understand why they get so much better treatment than we get. <laughs> That's a very good question. Do we know do we, do we, do we, do we our lawyer on the retainer too? Can we, can we sue them for, you know, us losing out on 15 cars a day? I mean, they, they sued for losing, I don't know what, $10 a trip? Or they weren't even losing trips. I mean, we're losing actual production on the island. Yeah. I mean, it just doesn't seem like that is our ferry. The Curtis mm -hmm. is the spare ferry. When that ferry has to go off, they get the spare ferry. That's how it should work. It shouldn't be you take someone else's ferry, right. especially in the winter when we have a rougher trip than they do. They have to pay the day for rougher conditions. It's just this whole mm -hmm. safety bullshit that they had with us with the lights a couple of years ago. They haven't addressed any of those conditions. It's just so really, the ferry service, we, should, we need to do something about the ferry service. I don't know exactly what it is, but in my mind, it's get our lawyers working on some kind of a, I don't know, a prejudicial lawsuit versus vinyl haven. I don't exactly know how you go about it, but it seems like we are always there with them, boy. Yes, I would completely agree with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't even know that's why the Thompson was off. Oh, it's, it's up in Alsborough. It's up in Alsborough. For the 20 minute. And I know that in, in the winter, in the summer, when the last trip leaves, that they leave cars over there in the summer when there's twice much, they have enough time that they go back over with the ferry and pick them up because it's so quick a run. Yeah. So I don't understand this time of year they need such a big boat that, I mean, it's causing headaches for business people on the island and, I mean, island people. And, you want to go off? Huh? Yeah. 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 I hadn't heard about headaches. Headache. The co-op thing so just recently about the trucks from the Reedy Brothers and stuff, and that just doesn't seem like. I mean, so now they're trying to figure out they have to pay more because their trucks that they own can't get on the boat. I mean, yes, yeah. it just doesn't seem that. Yeah, yeah. And put we need one to do. I mean, put the smaller boat on in the when the weather is worse and you know less daylight because. Like you said, the safety concerns is why they had to cut our 430 boat for this time of year. So now, <laughs> yes. so now they're cutting out yeah. trips, especially when we have a mechanical issue or something like the other day. We didn't have the big boat come clean them up, so people got stuck over there. Right. Um, it just, oh, God. They better not come back to us and say that our, our, our income is too low, that, that our tickets have to go up when they're the ones that are always causing us to lose money. Right. right. And also, yeah, raising the freight, which costs us more money in the summer, but a lot, you know, on and on and on. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know what. I don't know what. Maybe that's something you can run by. Yeah, the lawyer or something. I mean, Alvaro sued them, and it seems like yeah. they bend over backwards for those guys now. They always have. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Phil's heard anything more through the advisory board, but I remember, you know, when Mark had reached out to me before the, the change had been made, and I did express the challenge it would pose on the freight, and you know, did mention that you know if you run two trucks end to end, as, as some of the posts require or call for the tariff, um, especially the smaller boat, you use at least four, if not six cars, I believe, um, every time that happens, and you know, it's basically, you know, they were expecting it to be sometime in December that it would it would come back to the chase. The Smith would come back into service for Islesboro. The Thompson would come back. I don't know if that's still on schedule or not. Um, did cite that the, they had a, a condensed schedule from COVID. They, they aren't running their nine round trips. I think it's, I think it's seven round trips now um, to be able to space them out a little bit further for cleaning to happen in between runs. Just the reason he had given. I think they've got a 15 minute turnaround for every trip. Um, and so these are just the things that were provided to us, or to me at least, from him. And I don't know if it was brought up further on the advisory board meeting or not, or if you have a more updated version of when that vote might come back. I don't at this point. We're meeting again in a 
uh, few weeks, but uh, the protests against moving that ferry to Islesboro fell on deaf ears. And it's, it's enormously frustrating. I certainly understand and sympathize. And I wish that uh, it were a more responsive management, but uh, right now it's not. And uh, for that matter, I wish there was some, I wish there was somebody on there representing Vinyl Haven who could do more than I do. But uh, that's the way it stands right now. Yeah, it's not I'll see if I can day find out more tomorrow about the particulars. Doesn't help what's going on and being affected today, and, but you know, hopefully with the spear coming on this spring, if that also still stays on, according to plan, spring the plan, spring the twenty fifth, this spring, this coming spring, um, you know, hopefully that'll, you know, there'll be another bigger boat at least in in the reserve or not at least the smallest one, but hopefully that helps a little bit, but it doesn't address the issues that Jake, I didn't hear about the freight. Either. They're running another vehicle just to accommodate the boat. I think that's what's bringing up to the ferry service. I think they should send those extra bills over to Alabama and then pay for them. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like Dave said, the Kermit is the fair boat. Exactly. And yeah. they never ever take the North Haven and God forbid they scream like hell when they have oh, a yeah, they have a worry. fair boat. So we fix it it's right there. So <laughs> we, you know, they really do put it to us in that respect. I yeah. Agree. I just said one, <clears throat> one more thing, and it's about the school world, the tree that's on there on Renee's property. Oh, that. Yeah. Thank you, Jake. Save me from bringing it up. Okay. It's been come back substantially. Is that still a problem? Well, I mean, it's pretty much bad, and it's that road so narrow when you got people coming, and, you know, side by side. It's just it sticks out. I mean, it's kind of a dead tree. There isn't any way that we can just take it down there. You know, ask her if we could take you down and buy her, you know, a new, you know, Another tree. couple hundred dollar tree to put somewhere right back a little bit. I mean, I know her name's on the school board, it's her tree, but it's right on the, I mean, yeah. uh, I had some combined, so. And obviously Eric has too. Uh, I, I imagine I got the same person you did. Yeah, yeah, but I brought it up, so I mean, that, is that a town road? Is that something, I mean, we have a certain setback, right? Yeah, I mean, every road generally has uh, either an assumed or a, a, a mapped right away. Uh, I don't know what that one is exactly through there. Obviously, there's not much room on either side before you hit um, front doorsteps. Um, I believe going in there, at least a certain length, it is a town road, at least to a certain length. It's not all the way around the circle. I can't remember exactly. But, um, but I mean, if you're hitting your mirrors and stuff, when you go by a tree, that seems like it's something that should be. Yeah. Awesome. I, I haven't seen it. Maybe it's been turned back enough. I don't. I don't know what, when it was trimmed back. But it was, I think within the last two months, I don't know why. Yeah, it, must not be, it must still be an issue then because I just heard this. Yeah. yeah but you can't trim the trunk. Right, that's the thing. It's so close. Like, yeah. And it's not really a very, if it was like a really pretty huge oak tree or something, I could see, you know, I'm trying to say, but it's a pretty scraggly looking kind of that apple tree or whatever it is. I mean, maybe yeah. there's a way that we could ask her if we could take it out and just. Yeah. Put a new one like over over in between her house and like the school so or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to just say cut it down. I'm just saying like yeah. maybe that could be a compromise. We could buy her a mm -hmm. you know, some kind of a young younger tree that mm -hmm. could go somewhere not as close to the road. That's, I mean, I don't know how that works, but baby tree. Okay. Right. I mean Does anybody else does anybody else want anything? I don't Okay, I move we adjourn. Gotcha. Seconded by Pam Alley. All those in favor. All right. Thank you very much for attending, everybody. Have a good evening.